Well, good afternoon or early evening, everyone. Thank you so much for, for coming out and being part, along with us, of this conversation about ecological change through the arts and how we might restory the landscape. Don, I think you've taken over that thing with that, so better give that to me. It looks like it wants this. <laughs> the technology. <laughs> All right. We're just getting our technology sorted out. Why is that not working? There we go. Wisconsin. The Dairy State. A beautiful story. One so often told. It's a story of a family, of, of honest work, of harmony with the land and the sustenance we milk from that harmonious work. Yet something is always out of frame. <laughs> With any frame, of course, much more is out than in. And the way we're constituted, it, it can't ever be any other way. We cannot see it all, all the time everywhere, all at once. To see is to not see. To hear is to not hear. To feel, perhaps, is to not feel. And yet, we need to, to walk along stumble along, dance along, across the landscape, the landscape of our lives, and nonetheless, looking and overlooking, regarding and disregarding, counting and discounting as we go. Narrative enables this necessary selectivity, this knowing and this, this ignoring, this remembering and this, this dismembering. For what we remember makes us members. It remembers us as we remember it. And in this way, this thankful way, narrative presents us with presence. Narrative conjures ghosts for us. See my ghosts <laughs> there? Not just ghosts of the past, but ghosts that carry on into the present. The present is alive with presences. And so too is our sense of the future. Narrative thus gives us pre-sense, attuning us to the there and the where, the then and the now, shaping how we enact what will be. I'm being abstract. <laughs> but we all are, every day, 
to get any traction in this life, you need distraction. You need to pay attention and to pay not attention. And to be a cause in this life, you need an understanding of because. To be cause, you need a sense of because. And that sense of because must be limited as we too are limited. Action depends on abstraction. And herein, herein lies the great value of art in ecological change. <laughs> I am talking about our topic today. <laughs> I'm getting there. And the point is, is that art represents, that is, it represents, it summons presences or not. For given our limits and given our causes, art also creates absences. Great harm and great repair equally eman emanate from the presences and absences we narrate into being and into not being through art. So, narrate wisely. And I think this admonition is very much in the spirit, if I may put it that way, <laughs> continuing my presence and ghostly theme, of the Chazen's current exhibit on resource and ruin, Wisconsin and enduring landscape, and as well on the exhibit on re-emancipation. If you haven't visited these yet, I very much encourage you to uh, after, after uh, tonight's talk. And this admonition is also, as we will describe, very much in the spirit of the work of the Worm Farm Institute and Canopy Dance Company and our collaborations together. These are all efforts at not just restoring the land, but restoring it. Retelling as we retell. Resource, emancipation, restoring, these are all efforts at re, but not in the sense of re as do again, but in the sense of re as do differently. Art is always a re-presentation, however modest or magnificent be the work. Consider the narrative decision of the Chazen to include this Ho-Chunk basket in the Resource and Ruin exhibition. We now see the presence of the Ho-Chunk more clearly. A spirit comes more insistently into view, into our view of the Wisconsin landscape. Or consider the way this etching re-narrates the bucolic vision of animal agriculture. If you can see what's going on there. <laughs> Have a look for a second. It's right out here, just upstairs. <clears throat> Conjuring presence, though, is ill-conceived if the goal is restoring what is lost, making it there again. For that cannot ever fully be. Rather, we give absence resonant presence by restoring it, we remember by remembering. Mm -hmm. 
to that joyful, if perilous task, <laughs> we now turn, considering next the incomparable narrative work of the Worm Farm Institute. Got this. I forgot this one, my favorite one. <laughs> That's the passenger pigeon brought fully into our remembering. I think it works, you can see. Yes, we'll get more into this. <laughs> Good evening, everyone. Thank you so much, Mike, for setting the pace here. Um, so uh, we're not going to go into a long explanation about who Worm Farm is. We're going to be talking a little bit about our major uh, public event, which is called the Farm Art Detour, which it, within it, our art amplifies what landscape quietly asserts. So I'm going to show you a lots of images, and they're not necessarily connected to what we're talking about at the moment. It's somewhat random. Oh. Okay, all right, thank you. Thank you. Um, all right, so thank you. So the Farm Arts Detour began in 2011, and it is a self-guided drive through the scenic working farmlands of Salt County, Wisconsin. And this is an example of a field note. Um, so uh, in the... In the storying um, idea, we describe this 50-mile self-guided drive as a narrative that we invite you into that has a beginning and a middle and an end and a story about uh, an imagined future. And in that 50-mile self-guided drive, art, uh, um, artists create artwork that is site responsive. There are pasture performances, roadside poetry, and um, and local food. And we call it a narrative because the, uh, we punctuate the landscape and the punctuation is the artwork and it's the thing that slows you down to pay attention to what farmers do every day and particularly what, what they might do tomorrow. So these are some examples of site responsive artwork. Um, we've been doing this since 2011. It began as an annual, as a part of Fermentation Fest, a live culture convergence, and live culture in all its forms, everything from dance to poetry and uh, yogurt to sauerkraut. And we've been collaborating with Mike Bell and his good timing, Grammany, his, his, uh, one of his bands. I don't know whether it's still in existence. Is it? <laughs> it didn't really make it through the pandemic, unfortunately. Yeah, well, yeah. a lot of casualties in the pandemic. But the music continues. And it was the beginning of a great collaboration. I believe this is in 2013. And uh, we've been working with Canopy Dance as well uh, over the years. So I'm going to f um, continue um, moving the images and give Jay a chance to talk more about the detour and the work of the artists and the farmers. So I guess it, I'll, I'll talk a little bit about the, the work we did with uh, Mike and Gramini because that was really exciting series of collaborations that began uh, with, with just them simply performing uh, on the detour. Uh, and then uh, w with this fermentation fest idea, which is what the detour the came out of, right? Um, the, the, I, we, we worked, we leaned really hard into those fermentation metaphors. And Donna used some of them with you here, the yogurt and poetry things. Uh, but so we actually uh, used uh, Gramini as the starter culture for an, an ongoing project we called uh, the, the decomposition. So in uh, 2011 or 12, it was 13. Two, I think I, it was 2013. Yeah. 2013, uh, Gramini was was commissioned to create a, a original piece of music about on the on the uh, themes of decomposition and fermentation, and it was a beautiful piece of music. I think it was award winning. <clears throat> yes, it, it won Classical Album of the Year from the Madison Area Music yeah. Association. Germination. So, Germination, yes, a, a bluegrass symphony, symphony, which, of course, was written in the key of 
D, D, yes. D, a D composition. You get it? Okay. So anyway, as beautiful piece of music it was, that was merely a starter culture for us. So the subsequent year, 2014, three other uh, composers were selected to take this piece of music, that this award-winning beautiful piece of music, decompose it and recompose it in their own uh, mode of expression and it was really it went on for several years it was a really great project and allowed us to generate uh, well, I don't know one of my greatest uh, uh, successes is coining the term so we did a we did a, a day long symposium on decomposition right. de Jay did it generate or did it de Generate. <laughs> so we, I, I, this is all the point. No, I want to get to course. the the. Uh, we held a decomposium for a, a day long event where we explored the, the creative uh, potential of entropy, uh, and the, these are things that that we have worked with all all the during our existence. Worm farm. Uh, we we are farmers as well as artists, and so we uh, the, the 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 agriculture is not only the. The creative element from which all of our other stuff emanates, but it's also a source of, of metaphors that we work, uh, we use all the time in our in our work, uh, and just the the basic one of the growth and the decay and composite decomposition and composting and leaving fertile soil. I mean, these are these are um, metaphors we use probably every single day and inform a lot of the work we do. Um, so the um, the the uh, Donna got to use the word the uh, punctuation, uh, uh, punctuating the landscape, and that that the real attraction of the detour is the the land itself, and what we we put out there is just an excuse to have people come by and check it out. So, but it it does it impacts the community in so many ways with just the not only the artists that we commission, but also the the businesses and the farms along the route that have this influx of thousands of visitors every every other year. And there's uh, some really great interactions that take place and stories that are told and, and retold and reinterpreted in the context of the, of the detour. Um, what's that? So we, we talked a little bit. I, I gave it a little cheer at the beginning for Ho-Chunk resistance because despite the best efforts of the government, the Ho-Chunk never left the upper Midwest here. They've always, there's always been a Ho-Chunk presence in the homelands here. And we're very proud to work with a number of Ho-Chunk artists and culture bearers. This is uh, the work of uh, Chris, um, uh, Chris Sweet. Chris Sweet a Ho -Chunk, he was a Ho-Chunk painter, and we gave him the opportunity to expand his... Uh, uh, his creative palette, and he created a small sculpture for us of a project we did in 2021. And this is a, a, a 16 foot tall uh, freestanding painting that he did in for uh, 2022, which uh, was spent 10 days on our detour route, and then was repurposed and placed at the uh, at an old uh, Ho Chunk campgrounds in downtown Baraboo on the Baraboo River. So these are these these uh, re. Uh, surfacing these stories that ha have always been there, uh, the, the the people and the land and the and the in interaction that agriculture is. So I'm going to do one more one more thing here because I'm in an art museum and I don't get to do this that often. So <clears throat> uh, very early and in a previous life, I got to hear the uh, the, the late Swiss artist Christian Boltanski uh, give a talk and. At one point during his lecture, he told the crowd that uh, all great and lasting art is about sex, death, and agriculture. Right. Or sex, death, and religion. Sorry, no. sex, death, and religion. Uh, anyway. No, I liked it better before. Uh, well, and so the, the point, and, and it got a big laugh. It got a big laugh, and everyone, and, and I, and it, but yeah, that's true. Agriculture is also about sex, death, and religion. So, well, and we can maybe talk about that more in the discussion. So, I think, I, is that our five? Oh, uh, no, I've got okay. a couple more. I okay. just wanted to tell people that the detour lasts for 10 days, and so the, the artwork is designed to, to last for 10 days, and then it goes away. And we do it in the fall because we primarily use hay fields, like this one here, um, after the last crop of hay has been cut. So we do not interrupt the farmer's plans, and they can, it's easier for them to say yes to this kind of unusual idea. And um, so this is, I'm just going to show you a bunch more examples of different artists who've, who've responded to the landscape in various ways. They all have a long story. We don't have time to tell the stories now, but I'm going to give you a snapshot. And there's also pasture performances. 
uh, Canopy has been a pasture performance uh, star years. for four years, I believe. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. yes. And I've got a couple more images here. This was uh, a couple of years ago. This was pandemic year. Unlike most of our colleagues who had to cancel our, our uh, work on the pandemic, we, because it was self-guided so drive and everyone's in their own vehicles, we were actually able to do it. And we hi hired the skeleton before we knew we were actually going to be able to pull it off. So this is quite wonderful. This is another artist out of Milwaukee. All these artists are juried in. We have jury of six, and the artists come from around the country. This is the decomposium that Jay was talking to you about, and I believe this was 2014. Yeah. Ripe and rot. <laughs> uh, again, this is the skeleton. Uh, this is Canopy. Yep. I think this was the second year. Yep. And this mm -hmm. image we use all the time. Um, it's gorgeous. All these people are grounded in the land and they're reaching for the stars. So it just says so much. And uh, it was interesting that Mike started out with the word health, which we used also in the pandemic year. And we're going to wind up with wealth because this is a wealth that needs to be recognized, especially by people who live in urban places who depend on this landscape and having it continue, especially within climate change issues. So thank you so much. Do I just use one of my slides or? You can nope. just hit that button and yeah. That one? Yeah, that should do it. Hi. Hello, is that good? Uh -huh. yeah. Good. And I'll, I'm a dancer. I'll move in and out. Yeah. <laughs> uh, well, was a dancer. I mean, well, that, so um, the joke that Michael alluded to, for any of you who have maybe have been to a Canopy concert at the Overture Center for the Arts, I come out and introduce, and I always say this because usually she's busy in the back, Lisa Thorell, my life partner and best friend and wife yeah. <laughs> um, is she is the director of Canopy Dance Company and I am the co-director of the Canopy <laughs> Dance Company and she hates that joke which is why I tell it over and over and over all right uh, Canopy Dance a little bit um, was in corp uh, got its 501c3 in 1976 um, Lisa and I are the third directors in the history of the long and very fruitful history of Canopy Dance. We are residents at the Overture Center for the Arts, and um, that and that leads to this, which is so. There we are, a concert dance company, you know, in a theater, lights, blah 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 blah, special effects. But that's not just the whole art for us. It has, there has to be more. And then yes, years ago, 2011 at least, it was the first time I think we ever talked, is the detour and the fermentation fest. You know, that the opportunity came to us and we just love it. And it, and it, the dancers, the company and then the school that we also have, the dancers enjoy that. So structure is what we do at least tonight, there's some structure to what you are doing. It's not just out there improv But structure, but then outdoors and, you know, and in you know, nature. Um, like that one photo that you say you use a lot of those, the dancers there reaching to the, um, that cold morning <laughs> sun. <October. laughs> it was a week before we had been out on site, you know, and it was, oh. And then the day that we all actually officially were doing it, there had been a there had been a storm beforehand. It was a beautiful morning, but all of a sudden the ground they just they would step out and they would sink three inches. <laughs> and we went, and but and they you know we had told them ahead of time you know bring your Doc Martens or your your, your work boots, and you're gonna dance in your work boots, and they did, and they were wonderful. And for me and Lisa, it was like oh, fantastic. You know there was another year. Where the site that we were, we were all worked out. The, the if you've know, been in the countryside, it is wonderful. Is the big hay bales? I mean, they're as big as a small house, you know. And the the dancers were like, "Oh, 
yeah, we can climb on those. I said, you can. <laughs> and they did. Mm -hmm. And they were up on top of those huge hay bales, you know, um, just, and it was, it's gorgeous and fantastic. There's like, and, and we also have worked with, oh no, I'm going to get it wrong. The, the, the water, the, the water savings group, the, you know, the group that is trying to save the shorelines of the lakes and all that. Oh, so I'm sorry. I'm so sorry that I forgot. Their name Lake, right Lake Shore Preserve? Yes. Yeah. So we worked with them also. Um, and it, so, you know, and what it, it enriches and, in, and makes the dancers better artists is to, be involved with nature and not and, and and then part of it all becomes in nature all of a sudden comes into our concert dance and like like that or like that and then there is our season that we are currently in oh, we're three way where those are coming up soon is the third of our long and very very fruitful and wonderful season that we're doing um coming up march 9th through 12th but and then we have the rest of that season is a, is heading out that way um i think is that everything and we go to question and answer or no that's good yeah. I'll, maybe yeah. i'll talk about uh yeah. our, oh, our collaboration our collaboration because i figured yes. that would be question and answer but also then, uh, yeah, yeah. Uh, i should talk about <laughs> i could do it. i'll start um, our collaboration you come on up so yeah. our co uh, so our collaboration with michael uh, so we will co collaborate co here collaborate. yes <laughs> like so that came out of this one for fermenta there she is fermenta so that came out of for many ways when we were coming out of covid right because this was fall of 21 22 uh oh that was 21 that, that was, was fall 21 21, 21 yes yeah. where it was like everyone was like okay now we can be together in masks outside, <laughs> it was like, oh my God! Yeah, the, thing, the, the decisions we've made over the last couple of years about what it, we can do, but but it was also the decisions we've made over the last couple of years about what we can do. There's two ways of saying that, right? yeah. but um, so we made a so <laughs> Michael came to us because and you know that he, he and Donna had worked out a, some a plan, and you know and he came to us and and said, well you know can we put music and dance together? I said, well of course we can. You know, you know, Music and dance always go together. <laughs> Lisa and I hadn't choreographed for a couple of years because huh. I didn't know that. Yeah, because everything yep, yep. you know, we'd been uh, desperately trying to make Zoom work <laughs> daily. Yeah, so and so for us, you know, Michael said, "Okay, you know, I have a thought," and we 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 did some back and forth on music. But we and we put together a Michael Bell and a, and Eleanor, you know, playlist. Yes, yes, we can. There's uh, another picture, yep. another picture from the thing which was done outdoors at um, we, Fermentation when, Fest <laughs> because the uh, Worm Farm uh, alternates every year between the Farm Art Detour, which is that long tour with the landscape scale art, and then this wonderful. Uh, event three day usually three right or two day two or three day uh, thing that celebrates uh, fermented foods and the sense of liveliness of culture and uh, create creativity that generation uh, part uh, and then celebrates beer and cheese and chocolate and kimchi. controlled rot yes controlling Silent. rot yes. Right. <clears throat> Anyway, so we did it uh, at uh, the Fermentation Fest, and along with uh, this, this Elm Duo group that uh, uh, I, I do uh, more these days than Gravity. This is a, a duo, actually, with my, my daughter. Uh, Elm Duo, L for the Elm, and this for Eleanor, and the M is for Mike. Yeah, and so we did. We did this thing. It was like it was like I don't know. It was like an hour long thing. We put a bunch of songs together, and we were really trying to create a sense of spirit. You know, it's an interesting thing about when European folk uh, migrated here and, and did a little land theft along the way, quite a bit. But at any rate, uh, one of the things that that uh, I think is quite characteristic about uh, the European. Uh, derived cultures in North America 
is that they didn't bring the elves with them. They stayed back in Europe, right? And so the, 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 the sense of, of magical presences is actually largely depauperate uh, from the European imagination of uh, the North American landscape. And so we had a little subversive idea to try to create a sense of magic and spirit uh, and a little bit of devilry uh, in this uh, uh, thing that we called uh, enchantment. Uh, um, yeah. Magical, where was the title is back there someplace? There it is, Magical for Men of Love. I can show you like a two minutes of it, and then we have another collaboration we'll get to in a minute. Let's see if I can get this show up. That's the wrong one. I want to do it. There it is. This one. It was recorded outdoors, so the sound, the audio quality is, isn't isn't the best, but you know. And this is just a, a few highlights. Just give you two minutes of the thing. While you're putting that up, um, it was it took place at Whitwin Camp, oh, yes. which is this remarkable place in rural Salt County. It was a it was a Christian camp uh, back in the old days, and there's a tabernacle that was built in 1918 during the first yeah, pandemic, and they used to do revival meetings there. And it's this just kind of magical Europe, remnants of European magic there and we've been using it for three years and we'll be using it again this year. It's really quite remarkable. Okay, I'll play. I got the electronics worked out here now. Mm, maybe I should hit that button, shouldn't I? Yes. Try this. See the swishing tail of Mr. Scratch. Resist and soon will fail to Mr. Scratch. He's robbed me of my free will, my sense of good. But we had so much fun with that. We had to do it again uh, this past <laughs> fall um, with um, a different theme. Uh, this time we emphasized a sense of, uh, of, of um, coming to our, our senses where it uh, tells the story of a, of a, a woman who migrates uh, to the to North America from Europe, and becomes disenchanted with a kind of alienation from the land that happens with so much uh, lousy lousy work, uh, particularly in the food industry, which this this uh, uh, the green cousin emphasized. the The theme is based upon a a, a Yiddish song called. Die Grüne Cousine, which was sung in the 1920s uh, in New York City. We also included a few other uh, Yiddish songs in this, one from the Triangle Circle Waste uh, Fire. And, and there were some Elm Duo originals and some other things. And we came up with this story. And, and like, I, I remember, I, I like, I, on, you, you told me, like, I had to get you the audio by September 1st. Okay, and the performance was a month later. They choreographed and rehearsed 
uh, was 50 minutes. I don't know how y'all did it so fast. Yeah, and that's and, and again, that's in both of them, um, you know, Fermenta and then the Green Cousin. And that was and that was the thing that was also very challenging and wonderful for both Lisa and I. So for Lisa and I, what we did both of them is we just split all of Michael's playlist. You do that one. I do that one. You do that one. I do that one. You do that one. I do that one. You do that one. one, one. And but, but all, some, in, in the past, sometimes we we bring in other friends, other choreographers, you know. But we said no, it's just gonna be the, just the two of us. And there's a thing in you know in all you know composition work. I think where it's a musician, whether it's a, dan a choreographer, in, in in dance choreography, there's a, a rule of thumb that it's five rehearsal hours for thirty seconds of music. You know, wow. and, and, wow. and, and you know, that's the rule. But what Lisa and I have been at this for a long time, and we've been doing a lot of choreography. And yeah, we were in an hour, we were doing an entire five minute song <laughs> <laughs> because that was what we had. You know, today's rehearsal, you know, Robert gets an hour and Lisa gets an hour, and we have to get two songs done. <laughs> yeah, and it, what was also, we were out of COVID, the first one, Enchantment, but then the second one, Cousin, we were out of COVID. During COVID, the start of COVID, you know, we had had a company before that who had been with us for a while. They, you know, aging. Yeah, yeah. But you know, but they, everyone made a lot of choices during 1920 and 21 about life choices. And we had a lot of our dancers been with us for a while. Said, "This is a great opportunity since I'm, you know, to move on to something else." And you know, thank you, we love you, and all that. So then we had this new young company. You know, or, you know, you know, they're all, you know, fresher out of college, with you know their their undergraduate dance degrees and all that, and and, and so they were from an, and so they also were like, yeah, it we, you know, it takes three semesters to do you know a a, a song, <laughs> you, know, <laughs> you know, and and we were like, you are going to learn an hour's dance in a month. And they're all like, really? <laughs> but you know, but it's, it, but you have to, you have to do the work, do the work, do the work. Just in order to, you know, and, and then don't worry if everyone just hates it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and, 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 and Michael gets this, right? And any composer, any, any musician gets this. You know, you just, you have to do the work, do the work, yeah. So then, the Green Cousin. Yeah, yeah the Green Cousin. And, and again, this was a, a collaborate. This, this was performed at, actually, in this time, uh, at the Detour. Uh, it was an indoor performance at a, a, a lovely place called the Free Thinkers Hall, if you haven't been there in By Sox the way, City. that's where the decomposium was, if you recall. That's correct. Yes, yes, yeah, yeah. And the theme of the de Detour usually has a theme every year. And this past uh, one that was coming to our senses. So I mean, we like the senses part, you know, the presences and all of that the spirit sense too, but also senses of what you feel and sight and, and also sense in the sense of, would you come to your senses, please? <laughs> so it's a powerful, powerful word. And we had a great time, you know, uh, chatting about what theme we might do and coming up with a story and there it was so there's a picture of uh, uh, we did it this is outside the, the free thinkers hall there's a beautiful uh, gazebo gazebo there but maybe I should show them a few minutes of this yeah, shall we yes. all right let's see if I can smart enough to figure out how to do this for us for me one of the source materials as he does that was um, Upton Upton Sinclair I kept going back as we the story we came up with about Im the immigrant and how they were taken advantage of, you know, by industry and you know it was it's it's fun. We're pr proud of what we all work together. It was really good, and I, and I just love the way um, you folks immediately kind of got into a sort of a nineteen twenties uh, vibe with the thing, and we tried to keep the music kind of a little bit uh, in the nineteen twenties for the most part, though we went out of it here and there. <laughs> and then I did play banjo on one thing. But anyway, which I may do for you too in a few minutes. But anyway, yeah. So to give you like uh, four minutes or so of, of uh, the green cousin. Yeah. 
nice. <laughs> I, I did mirror it. I did mirror it. It unmirrored. It unmirrored, it unmirrored on us. I'm watching him do this. I look at this. See, look. See, now I'm saying it's unmirrored. That is like, okay. Please stay mirrored. <laughs> Don't change. I think there's a spirit in my computer. Thanks for noticing that. Okay, here we go.
maybe teasing you there with just uh, little fragments of the songs. Um, I'll give, maybe give you one of the songs uh, uh, from The Green Cousin. It's one I can do, I think, pretty well without Eleanor, who's in the conservatory uh, in Boston. So couldn't be here today. Uh, but yeah. What are we doing here? Oh, we seem to be in tune. Remarkable for a banjo. <laughs> uh, so I'm going to give you uh, uh, one of the songs there. This, it's, uh, it's called Brother John. And uh, it's a, kind of a twist on Frere Jacques. Yeah. 
Thanks. Well, let's, shall we chat then? Want to take questions or what have you? Or? Yeah. Let me give you a, hopefully you've uh, given some, uh, uh, a little bit of a, uh, something to ferment a, a conversation with. Yes. So what do we do next year, Don and Jay? What do you say? It's going to be Fermentation well, Fest again, right? This year, yeah, and then Detour oh, again coming, in 24. Yeah. yeah. And the next Detour is going to be? In 2024. 2024. Is it this time also going to duck into, or this time we'll duck a little bit into Dane County, right? Or no? It's going no, to stay in it's, so, it's, it's stay pretty in much so. the okay. same yeah. route in southern Salt County, very close to Dane County. Yes, that's right. <laughs> yeah, it's usually about a 45-minute uh, for, for <clears throat> folks from Madison to, to right. get out to it. And what? You had something like, what was it? 30,000 at the 22,000. 20, 22,000. Over, over 10 days, so well, it never feels like number. a mob. It's just a steady flow. Yeah. And, um, yeah. And, uh, uh, you know, Canopy's busy, busy, busy always. Uh, but um, we have, what are we doing? Next week, we are at the Overture Center for the Arts, Promenade Hall, um, Thursday through Sunday. Um, and then, you know, um, go to the Overture um, uh, website is the fastest way to uh, look for ticket information and all that. But also our um, canopydance.org, you know, our website also. And then there's another sh show in April, and then there's another show in May. Oh, and between that, sorry about that, right after next week's show, we, one week later, we're doing one night only, Starry Nights, with Kalanjali Dance, which is a um, Hindi uh, uh, dance company. Um, they do Bharat Natyam, Hindi uh, Indian dance. And we've worked with Minakshi. Oh my God, we're just Zooming, because she lives in San Francisco now. Her company's in San Francisco. We have been together, Lisa and I and Mina, for 18 years collaborating. Um, which, so th there'll be um, Bharat Natyam, Indian mm -hmm. dance, and um, then a mixture of modern dance and Bharat Natyam Indian dance. And this is, it's another one of those, Michael, where we're actually going to cr create it all the Monday morning after our last, our Sunday show <laughs> at the Overture. But for me, and, but, and Mina and Lisa and I are all just, yeah, we've done this. We, this is our dog and pony show. <laughs> we can, we can, yeah, but now the dancers have been working in the, the Bharat Natyam, taking a Bharat Natyam class a week, every week for this, this whole season, and you know, um, and her dancers are you know doing well. They've got TikTok, so they're doing modern dance all the time. <laughs> but you know, Rob, this raises a question for you, which is, you know, where does it come from? You know, there it is. Okay, uh, it's um, like in the case of, of uh, uh, coming up with the. Green cousin yeah. in in a month, right? So yeah. you had to rehearse that. You all came up with the dance and yeah. right, it and, just, and yeah, all these yeah. other opportunities, yeah. right? Yeah. Oh, so yeah. it's like where where does that 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 fermentation Tation come from? That 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 uh, um, degenera uh, generation that de and degeneration <laughs> that uh, that rot and that revival. Yeah. Where does it where does it come from? Yeah, my quick answer is it comes from the soul and the heart. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you know, it, and and the sense of for us um, joy, joy of movement, mm. and joy of you know collaboration also. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. yeah, yeah. I mean, and I think that's one of the really uh, great things about about dance is that is that basically the body becomes art itself. Yes, the, you know, the body is the vessel, as Martha Graham said. You know, it is. You know, the, you know, you you know, you perform. You know, with the body. So it and it's there's wonderful, wonderful expressiveness that you can create then with you know shape and form. But but also I think the the the, the combination of forms yeah. because you know, usually dance is done not always but yeah. usually done to to music. Yeah. The setting is really important. So when we did uh, did. When, when we when we uh, did en enchantment, uh, we did it 
outdoors in a setting. Yes, it was in part because it was uh, COVID was on. Although the, the weather was really nice that day, actually. Yeah. <laughs> you never know. <laughs> you never, <laughs> you never know. But 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 the the setting which which uh, you folks create and the the way that it's also. Uh, a linking of rural and urban, very crucial to mm -hmm. to yeah. Worm Farms' uh, work. So yes, yeah. so dance is is with the body. Yes, but the body has ears, <laughs> and the body is in a place. Right, it is right. present in a place. Yeah. and I you know I think it's really great the way you folks have created not just only for us but for so many artists to create a setting, a place for them to imagine uh, amazing ideas like what you were showing pictures of and so many, mm -hmm. so many more. So our, our work is really iterative in that it, everything grows out of everything else. There, there is no new Worm Farm project. It's only uh, an evolution of something that happened before it. And it, <clears throat> I mean, the, the, the collaboration with, with Grammy, which led to a co collaboration with another uh, uh, a musical group called Holy Sheboygan, which continues to this day. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Check out Holy Sheboygan on Bandcamp. They're amazing. But it, 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 it these, uh, these temporary and contingent relationships that happen in the course of our work always lead us to something else. What, you know, we, we find ourselves now with, with working not only with you through Gramity, but also with Grasslands 2.0, and then the, mm -hmm. the whole world of conservation and, and uh, uh, agroecology that has really influenced our work and will continue into the future. I'm glad you raised that part, uh, Jay, because I don't think that came uh, through no. earlier, no. the way that so much of what you do is also science communication. Right. Right. Uh, and uh, we were, were involved together through a project called Grassland 2.0, which is encouraging grass-based agriculture. Mm -hmm. so it was Fermentation big, Fest, the Grassland edition last year. That's yeah. correct. Yep, oh. yep, yep, yep. Yeah. Uh, but I think so we also respond um, in many ways the way the artists that we invite into the detour, we, they, they respond to the landscape. Yeah. And so we just create an opportunity for inspiration yeah. and put some parameters around it. And I think part of that is, is working in a land where you don't know whether your mud shoes are going to go into the mud six inches or it's going to be a perfect day, but no matter what, the farmer is going to grow the food and the dancers are going to dance. And I think that that's sometimes uh, a welcome discovery for both the, the participants as well as the audience, is that you don't have to have a perfect frame around it and perfect conditions for art to take place. It will happen. Uh, it's a creative process that has to be uh, um, allowed some wiggle room. Absolutely. I think that... that uh that activeness, that creativeness, is is really you know uh, right right at the the essence of, of of art as well. And I think maybe sometimes people might think of the two of you as you create occasions for other artists, but I wouldn't yeah. see it yeah. that way. I would see what you are doing is creating a, a space where it's an interactive space. So other artists come in, whether yeah. it's dance or whether the Agreed. the visual arts here, and then sometimes you create a a, a, a theme or like, a for format. A, a format, right? Yeah, right, we, right. we we yeah. oftentimes yeah. talk about our work about creating a format for phenomena to occur for creative phenomena. So we we have this this beautiful space of Saw County, a really unique uh, human and his and natural history of that land. We have the the sensibilities that we bring to the work, and then this growing uh, a cohort of, of co-creators, and those co-creators sometimes are farmers, and sometimes are professors, and sometimes are dancers, but they're all invited into this crock pot, or the fermentation pot, and, and, these, and these wonderful things take place. Some of them are, some of them we intend, and some of them <laughs> just happen, and they're much better than anyone could have ever imagined to, to, to create. And a shortcut is social sculpture. Right. Yeah. Um, and Jay actually comes from a sculptural background, and I come from a theater background, so it's sort of a combination of how we each have come to this work. And uh, each, our interaction, narrative. our orientation for the world and all the things in mm -hmm. it. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you. yeah. I see a hand here in the audience. Did you have yeah, a go. question you want to ask? Yeah, um, I was wondering, <laughs> is Holy Sheboygan, is that a takeoff on the fact that the area around Sheboygan and Manitowoc is sometimes referred to as the Holy Land? I Holy, the question is whether, I don't know if it came through. 
Yes, the, the question is, where does the name of that group that they mentioned, Holy Sheboygan, uh, come from? Well, obviously the Holy Sh, and then the little word. Maybe, that, yeah, that, because yes. the, there were seven yeah. members at the time, yeah. and only one of them had ever been to Sheboygan. <laughs> so I think they just like this. I think it's just one of those um, country expletives that, that, you're, <laughs> that you, you're allowed to get away with. Now they're called Hoshis for short. Yeah. Or Sheboys. Because the area just to the west of Manitowoc is sometimes referred to facetiously as the Holy Land because mm. it originally was settled by groups of Catholics. Ah, uh, I'll ask him about that. Uh -huh. <laughs> yeah, I see a question in the back of the room. So I think the question is: the question is, are there pullouts on the detour for folks to uh, see and interact with the with the sculptures? That's a big part of what we do: is try to. Um, why don't you? So yeah, I, they, there are so many factors when it comes to citing <laughs> artwork in in a uh, in a farmer's field. First of all, you have to get the farmers to uh, allow it to happen. So uh, and they, to be they enthusiastic. Are, they're our primary collaborators. Nothing could happen without the farmers and, mm -hmm. and their uh, explicit permission and sometimes their active participation. Then when we actually cite the work, I mean, we've gotten really good over the years. We work with our highway department. We work with the Land Conservation Office. So yes, every place there is a, a, a sculpture installed or any, any official site along the detour, there will be a wide shoulder. There will, there will be uh, no wild parsnip. Uh, there will be good sight lines at least a quarter mile in, in every direction. And if we don't have that, <clears throat> someone will then let us know quickly. <laughs> so um, the, the, uh, our, the, the people who live along the route are also collaborators too. They don't realize it at the time, but they're, they give the, this texture to the event that, I mean, we, we could not, we, we can place these 50 things, which sounds like a lot, but it's really over 50 miles. So it's like 95% of what you see is already there. <clears throat> and so we just in, install. We punctuate we, it. There we go. And, but yes, but it's also very thoughtful about where we put it. We're looking uh, for ideal view, uh, the view shed, but also all of these other factors that, uh, that uh, if you're just casually driving through, you may or may not appreciate them. Yeah. And it's also been a, le a steep learning curve. You know, we've learned the hard way that if you're too close to a blind curve, you know, you have traffic problems. But uh, it's grown gradually, so I think we're pretty good at finding the best possible solutions for locations. I think I saw another hand go up there. Yeah. So for those who are uh, watching live, the, the, the question is whether there have been broad trends in the uh, art uh, that has come out of the detour because the detour projects so often build one on the other year by year. So we've noticed, so when we, we sent out a, a call for proposals, you know, maybe nine or maybe a year in advance of the detour, and now this is we've done it. It's gonna be our. This will be time. our tenth year in. So there, there are trends, but a lot of them come. It it seems so. So there's a new jury every time we do it. Don and I are always in the jury, but there are always usually five other people, who who are who's uh, and who are almost always new every year. Whose uh, sensibilities help us select the artists, and there's a whole range of things that we consider besides their work. So we we notice, or I notice that a lot of people, a lot, uh, some of the artists that, uh, that send us uh, proposals, you can tell they've been reading our stuff. And they, they, well, sure. they find some buttons to push. <laughs> Due diligence. But, but, but it's also, but it, it does sort of give us this, uh, these sort of thematic uh, uh, consistency that overall that we seek. And it is all about this sort of sustainability and these these uh, urban rural connections and these um, living lightly upon the land. So there, it, it's it's about the human and natural history, and people just sort of figure that out by themselves. Every once in a while, we'll stick well, something. 
Yeah, I actually think that it's somewhat random. It's it's the whatever comes over the transom, right. whatever they are responding to. And so when the jury meets, we mm. look for how much the artists are interested in, in what we've laid out and how they see their own work within the context of what we've laid out. So sometimes things are very surprising. We had an, an artist this past year who used... Um, um, augmented reality and that's the first time that's ever happened but I can see that having opened up a window for all kinds of possibilities where I might had that have happened a couple of years before I would have said might have said that's almost an, antithetical to what we want people to do we want people to be in the moment in the real land and smelling the real stuff instead of Looking seeing at something again. but it was it was uh, remarkably effective and brought in different kinds of attention to the landscape. And so now we are learning to expand our um, our view of what's possible. You but it's... The and all that. This was a no, phone. This was there, was a, a, there was some sort of QR code. I never actually did it, but it was a, a way to hold your phone. It's a billboard-sized painting that you aim your phone at, and then it's actually tied to the ecological history of the area. Oh, and good. the passenger yeah. pigeon, uh, mm -hmm. ironically, is being extinct, that if... What the augmented reality did was show you all the things that have been extinct from that landscape and all the things that could come back. It was remarkable. That sort of get answered? Yeah. Yep. Okay. Yeah. All right. But it's, oh, it's all about, in many ways, uh, about how we might come to love the land. And I have a song about that. that <laughs> of course you do. <laughs> <laughs> that will conclude uh, Take this conversation on, uh, with, uh, and we'll, we'll hang around we'll hang uh, afterwards around. for a little while if anyone wants to come up uh, and chat. This is actually also uh, a song that was in The Green Cousin. Eleanor sang it a lot better than I'll be able to do, but you know, I'll do what I can on it. <laughs> Way oh, way oh, way oh, way oh, land is a cup that runneth over with great cascades, grass and clover when our Feathered servant, Quetzal Coatl, forest defender, the monster whom Baba call us to join, the worldwide endowment.
Well, thanks everyone for coming. Robert, always a pleasure. Donna, Jay, Jason Museum, Jamie, and uh, the crew from Audio for the Arts. Uh, Buzz and Noah, thank you so much, everyone, and uh, have a wonderful evening. And don't forget to see those exhibits if you haven't yet.